Hello everybody and welcome to our first video. So in this video we are going to be going over biochemistry chapter one for the MCAT. Um, and so let's get started. So chapter one of biochemistry really focuses on amino acids, peptides, and proteins. So one of the first things we're going to talk about are proteins. So proteins um, are made of monomer amino acids. So uh, a peptide um, is actually a chain of amino acids. Now let me get my other color here. So if we have our um, amino acid right here, this is just our you know general structure of an amino acid. So we have our alpha carbon, uh, we have our hydrogen, we have our um, carboxylic acid, amine group, and we have our R group. And we're going to talk about the R groups um, in a later part of the video. But those four parts, okay, all four of those make up the general structure of the amino acid. And so this is a monomer. This is just one amino acid. What happens is you get a protein um, from peptides. So peptides, as we said, is a chain of amino acids. So what happens is through a condensation or a dehydration reaction, um, you're going to get this. It's going to start growing a peptide chain. So condensation reaction condensation or dehydration reaction and right here okay you can see this and here's the second amino acid but they're joined by a peptide bond so this peptide bond um, actually produces water so what happens is you take this OH from this amino acid um, and let's say you have another amino acid over here okay and etc the R group, and then you have your C, O, 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 H, okay? So what's going to happen is you're going to take your O, H from there, and you're going to take your one of your H's from here, and this is going to produce water, which is why it's called a dehydration, because you're taking this water molecule out, and that is what forms this peptide bond right here that is connecting these amino acids. So the amino acids are synthesized. This peptide chain is synthesized from N to C terminus because you're adding to the, C, the, the carbon N. That's how you're adding to your peptide chain. So another thing to note is there are 20 amino acids that you need to know for the MCAT. Um, and we will, as we said, we'll get into the side chain shortly. Um, so all of those amino acids uh, except for glycine, are chiral. And chiral means that they have this alpha carbon that is connected to four different substituents. And we will see that glycine is the only amino acid that we're studying that does not have that. So all of our amino acids except for glycine are chiral. And we have um, all of our amino acids except for cysteine are an S con configuration. And we will go into configuration in a later chapter as well, but that's just important to note that all of the amino acids are um, S configuration except for cysteine. And then finally, what we're gonna talk about in this portion of the video are the side chains. So next we're gonna go into our structures of all of our 20 amino acids, and we're gonna be grouping them into polar, nonpolar, aromatic, acidic, or basic side chains. And when we say side chains, whoop, sorry, we're talking about this R group right here. So this R group, is what gives the amino acids certain properties that will make it fit into some of these categories. All right, so let's keep going. So hello everybody, and let's continue on with our amino acids. So first we're gonna start with our nonpolar amino acids. And there are seven of those, and um, it is very important to know all of the structures of the amino acids for the MCAT. Um, their full names, their structures, their properties, their first letter abbreviations and their three letter abbreviations. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we have is, sorry, the first amino acid we have is glycine. And I'm gonna be drawing the side chains in blue. So all of the amino acids will have this carboxyl group, the amine group, um, and the there's also a hydrogen here, and, a R, and an R group. And so that's what we saw in the first part of the video. So I'm going to be drawing the R groups right now, and it's the R groups that make these amino acids nonpolar. So the first one is glycine. And so for glycine, it actually has two hydrogens. So one of the hydrogens is there as a regular, you know, part of the amino acid structure, 
But then glycine actually has an, another hydrogen added as its R group, which is, as we mentioned before, is the only um, non-chiral amino acid because this alpha carbon is not connected to four different substituents because two of the substituents are the same. So our next um, amino acid is valine. And so valine, we have, valine is a little easier to remember because it kind of looks like a V. Okay, so this is valine, um, V and the VAL as its um, three letter. Sorry, and glycine is G and GLY. Um, so this is valine. And the next amino acid, a nonpolar amino acid, is um, leucine. So we're going to come right up here. Um, I believe you can see it. Let me move it over a little bit. There we go. So now let's, yes, yeah, so let's look at leucine. So leucine actually has, I'm going to write it over here and then I'll move out of the way. So leucine Leucine kind of looks like this. It has um, one, two, three, four um, carbons in a side chain um, attached to that alpha carbon of the amino acid. Um, next, we have isoleucine, and isoleucine um, has I and ILE as its three letter abbreviation, and its structure. Is like that. That is isoleucines, um, our group right here. Okay, so our next one is proline. I might have to move the camera a little bit for these ones. So just bear with me. Okay, proline. I'm gonna draw it and then I'll move it. So proline is also a very interesting one. So proline um, down here, which we will see actually has um, a, a ring-like structure attached to it. So you will know that this one is proline. I will draw it and um, I will move out of the way. Okay, so proline looks like that. And then it has P and P-R-O as its three letter abbreviation. Okay, next we have alanine. Alanine is, um, you know, definitely one of the easier ones to remember. I'll just move this back here so you can see. Okay, so there we have alanine. Alanine just has a line to represent the one, the one carbon attached to it. And finally, we have methionine right down, down there at the bottom. It's a little more complicated. So methionine actually has a sulfur in this R group. So, so this is what methionine looks like. And I like to remember methionine because it kind of looks like an M with the, net, with the sulfur in it. So, so those are our nonpolar amino acids. Um, and stay tuned for the next group that we're going to go through. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So now we're going to go through our polar amino acids, okay? So our polar amino acids, again, their side chains that we're about to draw out here is what makes them polar. So the first amino acid, first polar amino acid um, is serine. So um, serine, I'm going to draw the um, side chains in blue. So serine, S-E-R-S, -E um, actually just has an OH group as its as its side chain, okay? And that's what makes it polar is this OH group. So next we have threonine, and threonine has an OH group, there we go, with an extra carbon over here. So that is threonine, T-H-R-N-T, as its one letter abbreviation. Um, the next one we have is glutamine. So glutamine is a one letter abbreviation, a little weird, it's Q, and that's kind of one of the odd ones that you just need to remember. So glutamine is Q, and it's side chain, H2N, so it has another amino group there, and another carbonyl carbon. Okay, so that is what glutamine um, looks like. 
And then we have asparagine, which is very similar, but just with one less um, carbon. So the um, asparagine is going to look like this. Carbon your carbon. Oh, drew a little bit further away there. Sorry. But yes, it just has um, one, two carbons. And here we have one, two, three carbons, okay, in that chain. So, um, oh, and our last one down here, our last polar um, non-aromatic amino acid is cysteine. And cysteine is also a special one. It has HS with the carbon. So cysteine, as we've mentioned, is also important to note. So that's an HS attached to a carbon, attached to the carbonyl, I'm sorry, attached to the alpha carbon. So please stay tuned for our next group of amino acids. All right, so for our next group of amino acids, we have our aromatic amino acids, okay? So the first one that we're gonna talk about is tryptophan. Tryptophan is the largest, um, is the amino acid with the largest side chain. So this one is a little um, more complicated. So just give me one second here to draw it out. So you're gonna have, that's in nitrogen. All right, so this right here is tryptophan and it's aromatic due to its aromatic ring right here, okay? Um, so tryptophan is TRP and W, another one of those weird ones, but my friend did make up a really cool acronym for this. So um, if you go on a, let's say you win a trip, okay? So that's how I remember this one, trip, you would win a trip to go on vacation. So all the vacations you want after we're done studying for this test, right? <laughs> so phenylalanine, Phenylalanine, sorry, is our next aromatic amino acid. This one is quite simple in comparison. And so we just have an aromatic ring right here. Just like this. All right. So that is phenylalanine. P-H-E is its three letter abbreviation. And F is its one letter. But phenylalanine, f, -f, -f, -f for F, yes, that makes sense as well. And then... Sorry. Finally, we have um, tyrosine. And tyrosine has um, an aromatic ring with an OH group attached. So when we see the OH group, if you remember the last group that we did, the OH group meant that our that, that group was um, polar, right? So tyrosine is the only polar aromatic amino acid. And I do have a song to remember all these amino acids. And maybe if I have enough courage to do so, I will post the song. Um, but you know, it's really important to know the structures as well. So um, tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine are th the three, um, pol uh, sorry, the three aromatic amino acids that you need to know for the MCAT. Okay. All right, everybody. Now here is our last group of amino acids. So we are with our we are now working through our charged amino acids. So you'll have positively or ch negatively charged um, amino acids due to their side chains being acidic or basic. So we're going to go through exactly what that means in the next part of the video. But right now this is just the structures of the basic and the acidic amino acids. So the first uh, basic amino acid that we're going to look at is lysine. So lysine has um, L-Y-S as its three letter abbreviation and K as its one letter. And the structure of lysine looks like this. Okay, so there's a few, you know, carbons and then this nitrogen group right there. All right, so our next uh, basic amino acid is arginine. Arginine has A-R-G, as its three letter abbreviation and R as its one letter. And that's kind of easy to remember, arginine, and it has an R um, as its letter. 
So our Janine side chain is like this. Oh, I don't know if I have enough space there. Let me just start over. So our Janine side chain has a nitrogen there, a nitrogen there, as well as a nitrogen there. So I'm hoping you can see, let me just move in here for a second. So that is arginine right there. It has um, a few carbons, a nitrogen, hydrogen, um, a du another double bond to a nitrogen, and then uh, finally another nitrogen with a hydrogen. It's with two hydrogen, sorry. So yes, that was what our arginine was looking like. And then we have histidine. So histidine is um, actually a pretty cool one. So histidine is, uh, it has HIS as its one letter, as its three letter abbreviation, H as its one letter abbreviation, and its side chain kind of looks like a house. And that's how I remember histidine. So it has a nitrogen down here, nitrogen up there. Okay. This is double bonded as well. But this kind of to me looks like a house. So that's how I remember the city. I'm not sure if you can see it. There we go. All right. So this is what his looks like. Okay. So all of our basic amino acids have a positive charge. Okay. And like we said, we're going to see how they get those positive charges um, at a you know, neutral pH um, in the next part of the video. But for now, those are your basic amino acids. Now we're going to get into our acidic amino acids. So our acidic amino acids will have a negative charge and those, uh, there are only two. So one is aspartic acid and one is glutamic acid. And again, it's right down here at the bottom. So I'm going to fill them out and show it to you. So feel free to speed up the video at this moment. All right, so let's take a look at glutamic and aspartic acid. So aspartic acid looks like this. Okay, it has carbon, carbonyl, oxygen, OH. So it has its carboxylic acid side chain over here. And then we also have that for glutamic acid, but glutamic acid just has one extra carbon in the chain. So these both are our acidic amino acids and those will have a negative charge. And another important thing is um, aspartic acid has ASP as its three letter abbreviation and D as its one letter. So aspartic acid is how I remember the hard D's in there. And then the glutamic acid, um, glutamic acid, and it has an E. So that's a little bit hard to remember, but you can just remember A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so that's how I remember those. All right, now let's keep going here, everybody. So as we continue through chapter one, um, we have our peptide formation, which again is through condensation or dehydration reaction because you are um, removing a water molecule and uh, as you do this reaction to form your peptide. Um, but to break a peptide, this would take a hydrolysis reaction and you're using a uh, water hydro to break the bond, so hydrolysis. All right, so we also have different structures for our proteins. One being the primary structure is the linear sequence of amino acids. And again, this is held together by peptide bonds. Um, now we have our secondary structures, which are the local structures of neighboring amino acids. And so this is typically our alpha uh, double helix or our beta sheets. And this is this uh, level of protein structure is held together by hydrogen bonds. And um, one important thing to note here is proline actually is uh, would not likely be found in the alpha double helix, 
but proline would likely be found in a beta sheet due to its structure. It can help with the zigzag nature of the beta sheets, beta pleated sheets. So our tertiary structure is down here. So that is the 3D shape of the polypeptide. So it interacting with itself. And this um, can ha happen through disulfide bonds, hydrophobic interactions, acid-base interactions, um, or hydrogen bonding. So that all can play a role in tertiary structure. And then we have our quaternary structure, which does not always occur. Now the quaternary structure is the interaction between the peptides um, of in different subunits of a protein. So some proteins maybe are made of different subunits, and that is where the quaternary structure would come into play. Um, another thing to note is denaturation. Um, so any uh, some specific types of detergents or heat, um, different levels of pHs, those types of things can denature the protein uh, structures, uh, the levels of proteins. Um, so there will definitely be some questions about that as well. Um, another important thing to note is a conjugated protein. So these are proteins that get their functions based on the um, prosthetic group covalently um, attached to them. So for example, lipoproteins are proteins that have a lipid prosthetic group attached to, to it. Glycoproteins are proteins that have a carbohydrate um, covalently linked to it. And a nucleoprotein is a protein that has a nucleic acid prosthetic group. So there's just those also important things to note. Um, oh, and a good example that they do use in one of the MCAT books, it talks about heme. So each of hemoglobin subunits, so again, that would um, play into our quaternary structure because heme has different subunits, um, contains a prosthetic group called heme. Okay, so that heme group actually contains the iron that um, binds and carries the oxygen, you know, in, in our hemoglobin. So, um, but the hemoglobin is actually inactive without the heme group. So that is why these prosthetic groups are so important. So that is all for our protein types. And next we are going to talk, or sorry, our protein levels of protein structure. And next we are going to talk about why our, some amino acids are charged or why they are given, you know, the, um, why they belong to the acidic or basic amino acid group. So that's up next. All right, so as we're looking at our um, example of a basic amino acid, we're looking at lysine. So pictured right here is what our pH of, what our lysine would look like at a pH of seven. As we know, the basic amino acids have a charge of plus one at this pH because we have a plus charge here, plus charge here, negative charge here. So technically those two char uh, charges would cancel out. We are left with a positive charge due to its R group. So um, an important thing to note once again is the three pKa's that exist for this molecule due to its three charged side groups. So if we are moving this molecule into a more acidic solution, um, as we've previously seen, this solution would um, give an, an H to this COO minus group and it would become COOH, right? Um, that means that lysine would have a charge of positive two in an acidic solution because this charge would no longer exist and we have a positive here and a positive charge there. So lysine, as we said, would have a charge of positive two in an acidic solution. As we move on and continue into a more basic solution. So um, we would, you know, this would again become deprotonated as we're increasing the pH. And then we would be in a more basic solution. So this group right here would, as we saw, lose this positive charge because the hydrogen would be donated to the solution to create water. And then we are gonna be left, which this is negative charge of the deprotonated COOA, COO minus group and this positive charge of the NH3 plus due to its R group. And so this is where you would find our um, neutral 
a molecule for lysine, it would be an more basic solution, and that would make sense as we showed for the other example. If you're taking the pKa of the amine plus the pKa of the side chain divided by two, that makes sense because both of these pKa of the side chain and the pKa of the amine would be in the more basic range, which makes sense for the pKa for those molecules to be higher, right, in between the two. So now if we take it one step further, so this would be when lysine is neutral and has no charge, but if we take it one step further, we see that again, this side chain would then become deprotonated and we would be left with this negative one charge. So that is where lysine would have a negative charge, would be in a very basic um, solution. So hopefully these drawing these out really helped you understand. I know it really helped me go through things when I really drew them out and saw all the different possibilities that this mo the ways this molecule could look um, through the different pHs. You could also look for different titration curves. This is you know kind of under those those categories. But really understanding what happens to the molecule at those different pHs is really going to help you conceptualize things. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.